everybody. So this is Chrissy and I have Sherry Snyder with me today. And Sherry is a very special guest for quite a few reasons, not only because she's going to share with us some really cool information about dating in our 50s and dating after divorce and widowhood, um, but Sherry and I have known each other. We were trying to figure that up before we started recording and 18, 20 years, somewhere in there. We met um, as business colleagues at one point, and we've just kind of evolved into uh, friends. And I consider her one of my dearest friends. She actually is, I was just joking with her because she, uh, many years ago, she and her husband decided that they were going to leave Michigan. Uh, it's cold up in Michigan. I'm down here in Texas in the hill country. And Sherry and Todd just basically uh, decided they were they were done with that and they wanted to start a new adventure in their life and so they chose texas and uh ended up moving down here i think i saw a post from sherry here very recently sherry you were talking about how you got cold now and i know that people up north tend to think of us as kind of babies down here because whenever it goes below 60 degrees we're like it's cold um you know i seriously got on this call today thinking i needed to go put on some hand mitts because my hands were cold and it's i don't even know if it's 60 degrees out there but i know it's not in the 40s right um you were saying that it was really it was a different cold now you were cold and i was just like she has got texas in her blood now she's no longer adopted texas she's a birth biological Texan, it's in our blood. Um, so I I also, you know, I'm going to get sure to tell you guys more about herself, but she has just this unique background of she's come from a, a marketing perspective uh, with business, but then she's also got massively amazing design skills. Um, she and her husband founded Tiny Town Texas. And I have seen in some of my singles groups online, I see people talking, they want to convert and live in tiny homes, or has anybody ever done that? What's it like? And I usually go and fish out that YouTube link and show them, you know, how cool it can be. Um, Sherry was actually featured with her husband on HGTV uh, because they were just so amazing with these tiny homes and um, just, just a really great person. And so why is Sherry on today's interview what I you know what what's going on in Sherry's life that um has made Sherry somebody that I want to interview about dating strategies and having a cleaner dating experience um you know just uh things that we should know and I'm going to pass the mic so to speak over to Sherry so she can just kind of tell you a little bit about her story and then we also just want to hear from her uh, some of the just she's gotten some practical knowledge and wisdom here uh, you know, in the, in the recent past that has just made her probably an expert in some things she never thought she would be, but some things that can really help us. And so Sherry, I'm going to pass the mic over to you and um, take it away. Okay. Thank you, Chrissy. It's an honor to be your friend and live here in the hill country. Um, and you mentioned my husband, so that may be puzzlement to people. Why is she talking about dating? Well, that's my late husband. And um, we were married for 25 and a half years and he was taken way too soon from us. And I found myself a 48 year old widow. And I knew that I had so much life and love left in me to give that um, one day I would create a second happily ever after. And um, the first topic I guess I'd love to to explore um, with you here since we're on this subject is the um, idea of would it be right for you or um, what would it be like for you to choose to date a widow or a widower and then um, kind of explore the contrast of what I observe in dating someone who's divorced versus widowed um, as an example. So um, let's see widowed there's there's always benefits and um challenges or opportunities that come uh either choice uh what i see as a plus when you when you find someone who created a happily ever after who is happily uh, married they have the skill they know how to have a successful relationship and how to make it last um, they know what loyalty is like. And sometimes in, in the 
divorce world, they've, they've not experienced a happily ever after. And so um, there's, there's an advantage to that. And the disadvantage that I would say to someone considering dating a widow, for example, would be um, she was happily married <laughs> and she didn't want it to end. So the um, comparison or the contrast where you might come in and be the hero, for example, to someone who was not treated well. And now you treat them well and and it's just really, you're the hero and it's it can be a beautiful thing. And then with, uh, with the widow, she recognizes um, a quality person, a quality relationship, and maybe a little harder to please. And I say that, um, like the the value that she brings definitely in my opinion outweighs the um the challenges but bring your best game and when you find the one who knew what it was like to love and then lose that love oh she is priceless <laughs> she's priceless because she will appreciate the she understands the brevity of life and and wants to live full out I have noticed myself, I have just zero tolerance for BS. I have, have zero tolerance for um, small petty fights yeah. or uh, judgments. So that's that's a, a plus as well. And let's see, let's go to the next topic. What do you want, what do you want to talk about? Well, next? So, okay, so, and just so you guys, and this is like a topic we could keep talking about. And I know we have some folks who have been widowed who are going to be listening. And so I want to reassure you guys that we're going to have Sherry back um, because she's going to talk more in depth about the unique challenges that people who are widowed face. And she's also going to be addressing a little bit more of things that you might want to know if you are somebody who is fortunate enough to date somebody who has been widowed. Um, you know, some of those things that we might be touching on are, and I know Sherry has probably run into it, but I've seen it online when I'm in these groups and there's people who are like, they don't want to compete with somebody who's passed away. And Sherry's going to address that. There's some really unique perspectives in there because you're not competing. Um, so we're going to talk more about that. And so I want to encourage you if you are widowed or you're thinking about dating somebody who's widowed or you're not sure it might come up. I mean, you never know who's in your future, right? So I want to encourage you guys to come back for that interview as well. Um, at the time that we're recording this, I can't tell you what day that's going to be on because it hasn't been decided yet, but just know you'll get an email and you'll hear about it. So um, keep that in mind. So Sherry, you and I, when we first started talking about putting you in on an interview for the summit, um, I remember we had gone to, it was a benefit. We were going to go see a concert, y'all, and the concert We'd seen these guys before, but and I don't want to name them because I don't want to uh, like diss them, but they just, they didn't have the oomph that they had the first time we saw them. So we decided to go grab some Mexican food and get, you know, get some drinks. And while we're talking about it, Sherry just happened to uh, let slip that she has a method. Uh, she has this method that she uses that uh, I think what really caught my attention was she said, Oh yeah, I know in X amount of minutes with a certain amount of questions, whether or not they're going to be somebody I want to spend more time with or have any further conversations with. And I was like, do tell, because there are people who you know would love to know this. What is the system? How does it work for you? And so what, um, I guess, what are the questions that you use to vet someone? Um, and I know some of them may be specific to you personally. So I want to keep in mind, you guys, when y'all are listening um, to any of these interviews, during this summit, everybody in here is unique. They have their own perspectives. I have people from across the United States, different backgrounds, different belief systems. Um, so when you decide to put together your own system or your own questions or however Sherry directs you, I want you to keep in mind that you need to find something that is uniquely yours. So if she has something, and I don't even know yet, I haven't seen these questions, but if she has something that's unique to her that doesn't apply to you, I don't want you to go, well, that doesn't apply to me. I want you to think about how could I tailor this for my own needs? Um, and they should be, Sherry, these could be questions that are good for both men and women to use when they're talking to people online or do you? Yeah, know? yeah. okay. So yeah. think about it. What happens, to, so you you hit a dating app or are you on dating apps? Yes. Okay, so just give us the process of like what happens and what do you do from there? Okay, 
Well, to me, my number one priority is to not waste time chatting with the wrong person. And so I have, I will usually ask one of my first questions out the gate are, what are five top qualities that you're looking for? And then I pay really close attention to those five qualities. First of all, if they don't uh, follow directions and actually respond with five, let's say they respond with three or they don't <laughs> respond or something. I'm like, dude, I asked. Oh, you're tough. Okay. So they have to give you five. Okay. Yes. Follow directions. And then a quality. So I'm getting, I'm trying to get into their head of what they're looking for on the internal or I'm weeding out if they're just the shallow one that wants the external. That is not for me. So you're not a hookup kind of person. Yes. Right. So I'm looking to see, have they really put some thought into their answer of these five qualities? So a, a uh, I don't want a common response, like cliche of, yeah. oh, I want her to be beautiful and I want her to be sweet and I want her to be uh, loyal, like honest. Tell me yeah. the truth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just the basics that everybody always says. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. lie. Doesn't cheat. Well, of course, nobody. Goes right. to that. So you want something beyond that. Okay. Yeah. And so. I can tell if I can tell also by that answer, if they do focus on like someone who won't cheat, for example, then I, that clearly tells me their past relationship, they were cheated on. Mm -hmm. And so then I know we've got some wounds that are unhealed because this is like a big deal to them as opposed to them saying, you know, I'm looking for someone who uh, has has kindness, honor, who is um, outgoing or. Um, and so anyway, so I'm looking to see how do they respond to that question and one of the one of the key principles underlying all of my detective skills and, and question asking is recognizing how we do anything is usually how we do everything. Thank so yes, how they respond <laughs> to this question is going to show me how they might show up in other areas um, of how of how a relationship would work. So I'm, I'm paying close attention and focusing on getting them to focus on qualities. And then I'm looking at if their response or their um, immediate thing when they reach out to me, uh, for example, is just all about you're so gorgeous, you're so stunning, whatever. Well, while I appreciate that, I'm quickly directing them back into, well, what are the internal qualities that you're, that you're looking for? Yeah. And that's one of the most common mistakes that I see people making is uh, looking at the external only. So when I'm looking at the, you know, the swipe left, swipe right, all of that stuff, I'm looking at their countenance, I'm looking at their smile, I'm paying, then I look at all of their pictures and I pay close attention. What's important to them are in those pictures. Is it a boat? Is it a dog? <laughs> is it kids? Is it? Um, people is this his car person. yeah is it his car <laughs> his fish he caught so many times we're like we're not trying to like make them uh, I don't want to like assume everybody who posts themselves lovingly posing up against their car is in love with their car um and it's okay to be in love with your car and pretty things um but is it your priority over you know those closer to you and I think sometimes you really got to pay attention to that. If you meet somebody and that's the first thing that you notice later on, and I'm just, you know, possibly speaking from experience here, later on, it turns out that things were their priority or one of their biggest priorities. Um, you guys got to pay attention to these things. What's Sherry saying? It's not just funny that, you know, their car, their boat, whatever is more important to them. Um, you know, it, it sometimes it really is. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so you're looking at those pictures. Um, and this is usually on a dating profile, right? So do you do a little detective work or? Yeah, yeah, the, the devil's in the detail. So wow. pay attention to um, what do I, what do I see even other people that may or may not be in those pictures and what does that look like? So one of the most important questions that I'll get to in, in a conversation, if I want to pursue further, or it may be in person or on the phone that this question get, comes up. But since one of the top 
qualities I'm looking for is a man who knows how to cherish a woman. So how can I, as a detective, how can I identify if this person knows how to cherish a woman just even in conversation? And so it's asking the questions about how does this man treat his mother? What's the relationship he has with his mother or did have with his mother if she's passed? What's the relationship if he has daughters in his life? What's that relationship like? Or if he has sisters? Um, and then specifically, what's the relationship with his ex or exes? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get <laughs> him to talk about, I'm giving away my secrets here, but I'm going to get him to talk about the past relationships that he's had and ask questions, why do you think that didn't work? And I'm listening with all, all of my being <laughs> to listen to not just what they're saying, but what they're not saying, what's underlying the words that are coming out of their mouth. <laughs> and so if they have, if they show honor to their ex, even if she was terrible, do they still honor her if she happens to be the mother of their children does he show respect and honor to her as that in that position or i can usually tell right away that they have unhealed hurts bitterness resentment unforgiveness and that is absolutely no flat out hell no you do not qualify to be in my circle let alone to date me so that's, that's kind of one of the most critical things um, when I'm doing the detective work and the, uh, the question asking to vet this person. Okay. So do you have, I know for me personally, and I know several other, uh, well, mostly women, um, I'm sure that there's men who feel the same way. And I know, I know there's men who feel the same way, but for me personally, I kind of have a rule that, you know, if you are divorced or you were in a really long relationship um, and it's been less than a year, I I pass. And it's not because there's anything wrong with you. It's just um, for me personally, and I've, I've talked about this in a couple of other interviews, I think. Um, so this isn't gonna be you know, like a, a big surprise. I've been divorced twice. Um, you know, and I joke and I say, you know, when I was a little girl, all I wanted it, it wasn't my plan to like just grow up and, you know, yeah, I'm going to be divorced twice. And, you know, <laughs> and that wasn't something. So, you know, it was a, but it's, um, it taught me a lot going through, you know, both times and looking back at like, for example, the time period spent dating, um, you know, it was a couple of years between divorces that I got married. So there was like, there was a, there was a space there. Um, but I look back now and I, and I, you know, all the reasons that I gave for being um, ready to date again after the first divorce, they were very valid. You know, in that particular situation, my situation, I think, yes, it was very valid. But at the same time, I don't think I knew as much about myself as I know now. And that has really made me much of a more confident person, a more confident woman. And I look at that. And then I also look you know, I, I know, and when I dated again after the second divorce and I was blessed to be in a really great relationship for several years. Um, I'm blessed that it was with somebody who both of us were very well aware that we were broken human beings um, and very, just very good with each other. But uh, that could so easily have gone the other way. You know, it was, I didn't take the care that I should have. And that most people don't after something happens like a divorce or a relationship ends that way. And they don't take that time. Um, so when you look at somebody and, you know, for, for, and from your perspective, whether they've been widowed or divorced, what's, I mean, how do you decide, do you have like a, mine's a year, you know, because I just, and it's not because they did anything wrong or anything like that. It's just that I know now experience has taught me, we aren't the same people we think we are. And when you come out of a relationship, you know, you haven't figured out who you are yet after that relationship, because every relationship changes you. Um, and I really feel like, you know, after my first marriage, I probably shouldn't have started dating, not because there was anything wrong and I wasn't ready, but just because, you know, my next marriage, I don't think he actually knew who I really was. He didn't know me. 
I didn't know me, you know, and going forward, you know, it just kind of, it's, I think it's a repeating cycle for so many of us where, you know, I made a joke. Um, it's an email you guys are going to get, or it's on the site or something, but it's basically you keep repeating your, the same relationships over and over the same things keep happening. It's like your own personal groundhog movie over and over and over. Um, and I think that's what we do with relationships when we don't stop and figure out who we are. And sometimes that's going to, you know, take a few months. Sometimes it might take a few years, but that's a big part of why I don't want to just, you know, date somebody who is, you know, I've, I've been the stepping stone or the rebound, you know, and, and, um, I'm not saying there's anything, they serve their purpose, you know, but I don't want somebody to be, I don't want to be somebody's stepping stone or rebound. And I don't, at this point in my life, wouldn't want someone else to be my stepping stone or rebound. So what do you think, Sherry? How long do you, does it for you? When you, somebody says I'm divorced because of X, Y, Z, how long? I would say, yeah, definitely at least, at least a year. And, um, I'm going on almost two years now, single, just in that discovery process, exactly what you're saying. And I have noticed um, the men that I attracted um, in the beginning, say a year ago versus now. Oh, okay. This is night good. and day. <laughs> night you, and day. you know better. Yeah. And okay. so it was like, it was basically the first uh, one that I ended up dating was kind of like accidental as far as it wasn't intentional. It just was a friendship that formed out of necessity and needing help with um, my husband's estate mm. and then pulling out of that and the pain of recognizing how um, that was totally, totally the wrong person that would not have. Um, and, and one of one of life's greatest hacks, I think, I think is marrying well, marrying someone um, that you want to be like that because you will become like them and they will become like you. And so when you look at, when I looked at the, the pain, the slippery slope of being so lonely and wanting to be comforted and wanting to um, not be not be all alone and having someone to to help you through life and how that led to a, an unhealthy toxic relationship and I stepped back and I was like wow <laughs> that happened so my heart was not healed and I actually reverted to um, I recognized childhood patterns that uh cr that crept up and so the my husband was if you look i like to say if you look in the dictionary the antonym for narcissist mm -hmm. and you would find todd snyder's name and so i thought to myself why did i just attract someone very opposite uh when i know the real deal i know what true love looks like and it was really just the shattered pieces of my heart and then back to childhood um, patterns that I needed to find healing from. So it was it was from that that I really launched and dove in even deeper because I recognized, wow, what I who I am and where I'm at is who I'm going to attract. And so if I want, I just have to level up my game, myself, my internal qualities so that I can attract better men. So the, the pain I'll say of recognizing a, a mistake I could have made, um, made me say, wow, let's, let's do better. And so the next, uh, the next one I attracted was a higher caliber, but still not right. And then the, and then the next one, same thing. So it's been basically just three three testing relationships <laughs> uh, yeah. prior to now. And I, I don't regret any of those because it created the contrast. And um, so I, I encourage people, um, you, you know, go out and test the waters. If you make a mess, it's okay. You're, you can be safe in yourself as long as 
for me, I recognize this, the safety comes in knowing who I am, knowing my worth and my value and not settling. And so basically if it's not a hell yes, it's hell no. Okay. <laughs> well, let me interrupt you on this. Yeah. yeah. So, as long as I have known you, you have been somebody who you take a practical approach to things. And one of those things that I like about you is that practical approach. I remember at one point, I think we were, um, I think you were, you were um, just kind of playing with the idea of a coffee shop, right? And there was like massive amounts. I think I went with you to tour uh, a coffee bean place. I don't know what it's called. You probably know the correct term. It was really super interesting. You have done that with so many different things with your different businesses. Um, Sherry is a very successful entrepreneur. She does different types of businesses. I think I mentioned the the tiny homes that she did. Uh, it still has, you still have connections with that, right? You're still working in different avenues. Yes. So when it comes to dating, you have also just kind of briefly hinted that you did a course or you had a coach. Uh, I think on social media, you may have shared a coach. Can you just, did that coach help you um, with, kind of how you went about your dating process and how you evolved. Can you share a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. The value is called online dating discovery with Michael and Lisa Coons and okay. very, very valuable, fabulous. Um, I know you're going to have them as, as a, a mm -hmm. guest on here. And I know that they're launching um, one, one more opportunity where people can choose in to this 10 week, um, online dating course. Did you uh, take this course that you're about to tell us about? You did. Yeah, okay. I took this course a year ago in January. And would you say, so would you say it was like, kind of like when you're researching businesses and stuff and kind of preparing yourself and educating yourself, was that one of the reasons why you took it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. To learn from someone who has been where I was. In fact, uh, Michael and Lisa were both lost their spouses um, to, to, uh, death. And, um, so both of them finding each other, you know, later in life and then creating this beautiful relationship that I want to emulate. And so, yes, the, one of the best keys to success, of course, is find someone who has what you want yeah. and learn from them. So that's why I chose into that course and created an enormous amount of value and when I when I think back on it I was actually discussing with a couple other classmates who have been through the same course oh and I want to mention that they're um this offering in January may be the last um it is the last available for the year and maybe the last available for unforeseeable Ever. future oh wow okay so they they're they may be taking a different path so I just encourage people if you're thinking about it don't think too long and jump on the January option um, but really the, the, uh, to me, the antidote to not attract the wrong person is loving yourself more. And that, that's what I talk about in my, um, ebook that I wrote that is, uh, available for free. People can, can download that. Um, but and we have that, a link to that guys. It's in the interview email that went out today. So how you found us. It is in, there's a link to go and get that free gift. Um, Sherry, I want to backtrack with you though. You said you were talking to a couple of your classmates. And I think in a previous conversation, did you tell me that a couple of your classmates, did they find each other or they found someone as a result of this course that you went through? Yeah. So I um, was actually in San Diego last week, having dinner with a married, a married couple. They just got married in July and okay. they were in my course in okay. January and so what uh, what one of them was saying was they recognized through that course that they were pushing people away yeah. because they weren't ready to um, to open their heart and they were afraid. And so when when they recognized, wow, I'm doing this to myself and I'm a 40 year old single person by choice. And if I want to choose not to be, I can. So that revelation mm -hmm. led into an open heart to receive uh, someone that was in their life um, that they might have overlooked. And, and so they're married. Yeah, they're <laughs> married. And they're so cute and so happy. And just, it was beautiful. I got to spend spend the week with them in, in a training that we did for Clemmer, which is okay. something 
I highly recommend. I actually heard about it through the dating course, um, the leaders that had done this. It's it's just very in-depth heart work. And what I've watched people developing through these um, courses is their value as a person and goes from here to here because they're doing the work. And so um, I've seen the growth, exponential growth come out of just a few months of people doing this intense work. So that's why I've chosen to it. And I feel blessed to to do it right now while I'm single, because I know it's going to, as I up level my game, mm-hmm. then the I'm going to attract the the higher quality person. And that's what I've noticed in my last 12 months of this dating process is the more I work on me and my internal qualities, the more I surrender and, and open my heart the higher quality of person that I attract and don't waste time. I don't waste time with, with the wrong ones. With the nonsense coming in. And you know, this is actually what this whole summit is about is getting you guys to think about there are next level relationships out there. You don't have to be stuck replaying your groundhog story, your groundhog day story over and over and over um, with the same relationships. You don't. And there's just a higher level of being out there. And Sherry's mentioned something called the Clemmer event. And a couple of our speakers, other speakers also um, recommended her to that because they loved it. I am not uh, involved with Clemmer. I don't know that any of, I mean, they may have, I don't know if any of our other speakers are. So I don't want you guys to think that we're like promoting one thing. This isn't like a summit to promote a specific brand or event. Um, but I will say this, I have seen Sherry just go on fire here <laughs> recently. And I'm thinking this Clemmer event may have something to do with it. Now, do you need to try Clemmer? That's up to you. Sherry's going to have some information for you about it in her speaker page that we've linked you to. Um, I will say that some sort of self-development, I think, is important for all of us. Uh, if One of the things that I have noticed that I should have noticed um, in a previous relationship that I didn't was when somebody tells you that they don't need any more help, they don't need any more self-discovery, self-growth, um, that's a bad sign because there's nobody, I don't care who you are, how perfect your life is, we're all broken and ready to grow some more. Um, I took a course, um, I guess you could call it a course. It was this last summer. It's, it's ongoing for, um, several weeks. And then there's like, uh, what they call practice sessions where you meet with your group and your coaches, but I took it not knowing what I was getting into. It's called hardcore leadership. And it's also something that I recommend and that I came out of, I didn't really even think I needed it. I just went into it because I have clients who take it, the clients who talked about it. And I went into it thinking, I don't need this. I don't need this growth. It also addressed Sherry dealing with childhood patterns, which I thought I had nailed and pretty much taken care of. And I was pleased at how well I have adapted, but I came out of there and I learned some new things. Um, I, I got more confidence. I, there's just some real serious value in it. And some of these, these events, they will make you feel like you're going to break. They, I mean, not only just mentally, cause you're pushing yourself and emotionally, but I mean, physically Sherry's done some in person. I've done the one that I did was through zoom. And I can tell you 14 hours on a zoom. Holy moly. But I did come out of it. I grew. Um, and that was just once, I mean, there was, it's, there's a lot of stuff that's involved with this. So if you're thinking about something that will help you discover more about yourself, um, if you think self-help is cheesy, I mean, like I did, and I kind of still do, but then when you come out of it with results, cheesy looks good. <laughs> cheesy looks good. Yeah, cheesy is sexy. Yeah, that's right. See, cheesy is sexy. growth is very sexy on a man, let me say. Yes, for sure. And, yeah. So, I mean, that's, I mean, that I just wanted to show you guys that. So if you're thinking about, or if you've never even thought about it, maybe you should, because it's, it's pretty phenomenal. Um, so Sherry, I think you had some um, other things that I wanted to ask you. And I, if I pull off my screen right now, I might go away. Can you, is there anything on our list of things we want to talk about that we missed? Can you? Um, I can close it out with um, the, some of the value that I created in the, in the online dating course was um, really, again, back to knowing your worth. And so they had us do a homework assignment of creating a relationship resume. And so being able to put it in black and white on paper, what is the value that 
Sherry Snyder brings to the table in a relationship. And so when I saw that all in black and white and the qualities and the um, the resume of of myself, I was like, wow, I have a lot to offer and I do not need to settle. Um, and so when you know your worth and your value, you're, you're not going to settle. And the second piece to that is um, where I put together what I'm looking for, what are the qualities I'm looking for. And of course, everyone has, you know, this mm -hmm. in their mind. And I wanted to create something that was not too specific and didn't have a big focus on their external. Yeah. And that would allow me to keep an open mind and an open heart um, and focus on what the qualities that would make a lasting happily ever after. So I'll just give a couple examples of my, um, on my own list here. Um, so like we talked about loves personal growth. That's really important to me. And it has to be evidenced by how they're investing their time and money into personal growth and their journey. Um, and then a uh, shared values. That's, that's really important to me. Um, in fact, the uh, why I, why I broke it off with uh, someone that was a really, really great guy. It was a really great um, opportunity, but down to it I was more committed to my purpose my life purpose than I was to being comfortable okay. and so I'm looking for those shared values and life mission and so one example I I come back to and I use this in my life daily is what I created of my own life purpose statement which is I am a vibrant, open-hearted woman, and my purpose is to inspire others by surrendering to love and receiving the gift of this moment. So I'm looking at how, you know someone that would know their purpose, know their values, and, and that it, I'm really looking that our life mission would collide. That, yeah. that's, that's what would make me say, hell yeah, <laughs> above, above all the others. Um, also looking for a man, like I said earlier, who knows how to cherish a woman and then secure and decisive, a spiritual leader. And I say mature masculine, someone who is both powerful and loving. Um, and then I'll, I'll close off with this quote that I really like. It says, destiny, the seeking of a person who will compliment you and whom you will compliment perfectly. There you go. There you go. All right. Thank you, Sherry, so much for being here. And again, you guys, you'll see Sherry again when we talk about um, some of the things that are more specific to people who are widowed. And Sherry has mentioned a few resources here, the dating course. Um, that's actually, you're going to hear about the dating course, the dating, it's called Dating Discovery, right? You're going to hear about that with Michael and Lisa. And I think their interview is, I'm doing this with them tomorrow. I don't know, again, like which days, but uh, you guys will figure it out when you get your emails. So there'll be resources um, with their stuff as well. But Sherry's got a free gift for you. She has um, an ebook that she wrote. It's, um, tell me the title. I know it's uh, be well, becoming it's for 50. It's for 50 plus women in the dating world that want to create the perfect romance. And it's how to become the one you want to attract. There you go. How to become the one you want to attract is a big part of what we're talking about at the summit, because you can't get your cleaner dating experiences until you know these things. Um, I will say that just because uh, some of our other speakers are gonna be doing that. We have a gentleman who's gonna be speaking uh, geared more towards men becoming the person that, you know, that women want to you know, be attracted to. So you're, I think, I guess when you're coming, you're, you're finding out who you are, you're becoming that person that you wanna attract. And I, I wanna bring up one more thing. It might lead us into another conversation in Detour Sherry, but I do wanna, say that a lot of you are complaining. I see it in the singles groups that I'm in um, day after day. And that is you keep attracting smut. I mean, you keep attracting people who their conversations begin with. And I kid you not, Sherry, this one I saw recently was the gentleman opened his conversation, his introduction was, you're so beautiful. I, I want to pound you into the mattress or something. And then he tried to go into a, another. Uh, <laughs> it's just like, 
Would that work if you just walked up to them in public? If you just walked up to a woman in public and you said that to her, what would happen to you? I mean, you might get slapped. I don't know. But, you know, you're going to keep attracting uh, that sort of thing if you don't become the person that, you know, does it. Now, I'm not going to say that that's not going to randomly happen to you because I I don't think I would attract that sort of thing. But I have had men who they haven't specifically said that to me, but they have said things like, uh, you're so beautiful. I, you know, would love to be with you. I don't care if you're, you're married. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, I mean, they do come out of the woodwork and they're, you know, they're just testing you, but somebody who's going to try, try to meet you and actually talk to you and is serious about talking to you. Um, you want people who are going to be on your level because you're looking for a next level relationship. And I think, Sherry, if you, I don't know, you said you saw a difference between the Sherry a year ago and the Sherry now. And I know for me personally, the, I, I've always kind of been kind of, um, I don't want to call myself scary, but I'm very um, stern looking sometimes. And so that tends to put people off a little bit. But I also noticed that when people find their self-worth and their self-confidence, this is going to sound wrong, but it's not. Your prospect of dating people, your pool drops significantly. And that's a good thing. You might think, well, I'm okay, there's not as many fish to choose from. Now what? That's a good thing. It's called niching down when you're in marketing. Uh, niching, niching, I will always say that word wrong. But it's a good thing. You're getting your target market. Your target demographic is getting smaller, which means that you're not going to have to theoretically, go through a lot of fool's gold. Um, there is going to be some fool's gold. But you're, if you find this part of yourself and you get you become the person that you, know, you want to attract, you are going to drop that pool down. You're not going to have as many choices out there. But that is not necessarily a bad thing. Right. You've been looking for a long time. Those of you out there who have been, you know what I'm saying. You wish there wasn't a lot. So just another, in my opinion, reason to go check out self-discovery stuff, whether it's reading Sherry's book, whether it's attending the dating discovery course, um, checking into something like the Clemmer event that Sherry mentioned or the Heart for Leadership that I mentioned. There's a variety of things out there and I encourage you guys to go and check them out. So uh, Sherry, would you agree with that? With the prospects, that, 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 did you narrow down the field? Did it kind of drop? Yeah, I, I mean, my number one goal is is to get, you know, delete. Yeah. To mark it off your list. Yeah. Yeah. So, just narrowing it down. <laughs> okay. Um, and so are your questions that you said that you, when you were talking about this guy, by the way, I asked her before we started this, this conversation, this book that she has, because I'm trying to make sure that we have stuff for both men and women in the summit. And I was just like, can guys read this book too? Would it help them? And she's like, Sure, it's geared towards women, but the concepts all still apply. So it's a free gift if you want to look it up, guys, and see. Um, you know, and if you think you're worthy of dating Sherry, go read that book because you know <laughs> it might tell you a little bit about you know uh, where Sherry's coming from. But Sherry, are your questions that you've shared with us when you're uh, kind of trying to see if they're going to be right for you? Are those in your book? Uh, the general principles, yes. Yeah. The general principles are okay. Um, and you have some social media channels that people can follow you on so they can reach out to you there if they would like to ask you for more specifics on your questions, right? Yes. yes awesome. Yes. Okay. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm going to stop the recording now and I will see you guys back at the next interview. Here we go. Oh, by the way, if this is the last interview, Merry Christmas, everybody. If you celebrate, I don't know where we're going to be. So here we go. Stop recording.